Welcome back to Newsmax. Now, I'm Miranda Khan. In addition to talking about his Iran deal, President Obama is also talking about Bill Cosby. If you give a woman, or a man for that matter, without his or her knowledge, a drug, and then have sex with that person without consent, that's rape. That response came after a question about revoking Cosby's Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor. The president also said there is no way to do that right now. A German court sentences a former SS sergeant to four years in prison. 94-year-old Oskar Gronig was found guilty of 300,000 counts of 300,000 counts rather of accessory to murder. He served at the Auschwitz concentration camp back in the 1940s. Gronig testified his job was to guard prisoners' luggage once they arrived at the camp and collect money. Five people are injured after an explosion last night at a Zodiac aerospace factory in Washington. The blast caused severe damage to the factory, as you can see, which manufactures cabin interiors for planes. Officials say flammable vapors probably caused the explosion. A solar-powered plane is staying in Hawaii for the next nine months. The aircraft was halfway through an attempt to circle the globe when it suffered battery damage. The batteries overheated during the plane's first takeoff late last month. And today is Amazon Prime Day, a one-day online sales event touted as better than Black Friday. Yeah, but some shoppers, well, they're not so sure and seem pretty disappointed with the deal. Some even call it the Amazon garage sale. Ouch. Although I must say I'm a big fan of garage sales, but <laughs> still right. didn't go off as well as they had planned. All right, Mary, let's move on right now. We're going to okay. be joined here for our roundtable. Fiscal columnist, or Fiscal Times columnist Liz Peek and former Deputy Staff Secretary for President Bill Clinton Attorney David Goodfriend joining us with Liz Peek. Good to have you both with us here today. Thanks for having me. All right, so no comments, no questions about Amazon's Prime deal. But we do want to talk about <laughs> President Obama addressing this agreement reached yesterday with Iran on this nuclear program. Last night, he also spoke with The New York Times and Thomas Friedman expressing why he has no serious doubts about the accord with Iran uh, in a less than certain way. Let's take a listen. I'm confident we're going to be able to uphold this deal. Uh, it may be that it requires this to play itself out. We'll have to, we'll have to see whether, in fact, uh, they, they walk through those doors. I actually believe that they are interested in trying to operate on parallel levels. All right, so the criticism lies in whether or not this deal is going to make everybody safer here in the New York, or sorry, in, the, in America. The New York Times article also suggests that a, Obama's Iranian nuclear deal pits his faith in diplomacy against skepticism. So the question is, will he go down in history as a peacemaker or an appeaser? David, let's start with you. Well, I think he, uh, he will go down as a peacemaker, and I think he, all you have to do is contrast his approach to the approach we had when uh, the United States invaded the neighboring country known as Iraq and created the greatest boon to Iran ever in its history by eliminating its number one rival next door. That's what happens when you send high-powered explosives and hundreds of thousands of troops over to the Middle East. It really doesn't work. So I think what we've seen here is an example of diplomacy and international diplomacy. Let's not forget, the United States had sanctions in place for a while. It didn't really bring Iran to the table. What brought Iran to the table was when our diplomatic effort, frankly led by Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State, got China, Russia, Europe to the table with us. And that collective noose around Iran's neck economically brought them to the table. I think this is an example of diplomacy working. Now, of course, I'm glad, as an American, we have a Congress now that can review it, debate it. Well, there's a lot of questions and skepticism about whether that review process is actually going to work. Liz, what do you think about David's comments there? Do you think that's a fair comparison, bringing up Iraq here when we're talking about destabilizing the region? Well, I think he's lurching from one extreme to the other, and I think that's actually the criticisms of being leveled at Obama is that he has never been willing to contemplate that there's a full tool set available to the commander-in-chief it's not just diplomacy, it's not just military action, there's a whole lot of things in between. Uh, in terms of doing this deal, for example, a lot of people felt that uh, the president and John Kerry were almost unseemly in their desperation to get a deal and therefore gave up too much. Well, the implication of that or the underlying premise is that there are a whole lot of things on the table that we could have bargained with. 
I think that the skepticism, the diplom where dipl diplomacy, sorry, might fail, is, you know, we haven't really exacted from Iran much in the way of concessions and certainly no indication whatsoever that Obama's, uh, you know, optimism that they really want to join the family of nations, they want to change their behavior. Seven days ago, they basically committed to a billion dollar loan to Syria. That was such a slap in the face of the United States. It really wasn't much reported on here. Well, Liz, but it was Liz, sort let me of ask like, you this, okay. though. Do you think getting a deal was more important to President Obama than what was actually in the deal? Last question before we have to take a break. I, that's the way it looked. All right. Well, we'll leave it there. We've got more to discuss. We'll talk more about the Iranian nuclear deal and much more when we come right back. We'll have David Goodfriend and Liz Peake rejoining us here for our roundtable discussion. Newsmax now continues after this. We welcome you back for part two of our roundtable fiscal, fiscal Times columnist Liz Peake and former Deputy Staff Secretary to President Bill Clinton, David Goodfriend. Good to have both of you back with us. Thank All you. right, so we've been talking about this Iran deal. A new poll came out. It was conducted actually shortly before the deal was announced on Tuesday, and it shows that the vast majority of Americans don't trust Iran to abide by the terms of a nuclear agreement. 55% say not to trust Iran at all. 35% say they trust Iran only a little, and 5% trust Iran a lot. So I want to go back to what Liz brought up earlier. Liz, you were talking about Iran funding terrorist groups and helping Syria. Some are concerned that this deal doesn't actually have any provisions in place to actually prevent Iran from doing that. And in fact, we're going to make them economically stronger because we're lifting all these sanctions. David, your response. Yeah, well, first of all, let's also talk about the polls that show more than 75 percent of Americans, including the vast majority of Republicans, prefer diplomatic to uh, military options with Iran. So I think you have to include those, both those polls in the same breath. Yes, I don't really trust Iran. I don't think the president particularly trusts Iran. We have a, no, he doesn't. He says he doesn't. Well, that's right. So we have a process in place where five, uh, more than five nations, Russia, China, Germany, France, the United States, and the UN all have verification in place. So whether you trust them or not, this is how we prefer to deal as a nation. The vast majority of Americans do not want to go to war. They would rather try the diplomatic options first. And I think that's good politics as well as good policy. Now, to your point about whether or not I think that, um, I forget how you phrased it, do I, do I think they'll get more money out of this? The, the singular goal of these negotiations, and there was one goal, and that was to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. That is the goal. Now, we can say all these other things that we already dislike about Iran. We dislike the fact that they support Syria, that they support Hezbollah. That's all true. But you, you can't move the goalpost and now tell me that the whole goal here was to get them to stop supporting Hamas. Ultimately, that's a goal. This project was to get them away from the three-month breakout period that currently exists for them to get a nuclear weapon. And that goal has been met. That's really important. Right. What was the goal? What was met? Well, and supposedly now it's a year, that breakout time. So if that's the case, that would be good. Uh, well, only time will tell on this issue, and it's going to take a while before we know if the deal was actually good or bad, in all fairness to all parties involved. Meantime, another topic we want to discuss with both of you now is these Pentagon, the Pentagon talking about finalizing a plan to lift a ban on transgender service members. Take a listen. The Pentagon has announced that it is moving toward opening the door for transgender troops. This is the final gender-based restriction, one of the final gender-based restrictions that exists in the military. The various branches will have six months to figure out the logistics of integrating transgendered service members beginning tonight that the ban on transgender troops is believed to be outdated and a distraction. A distraction. I would say this whole conversation is a distraction because, Liz, I asked a friend of mine, a Marine veteran today, what he thought about this. And he says, you know what? Vets and people in the, in the service, they don't talk about stuff like this. They're talking about Iraq. They're talking about Helmand province. So why is the Pentagon talking about this, Liz? Well, I, I actually think that the New York Times has sort of driven this crusade. And there are many reasons for uh, them being interested in doing it. Some people think that they're trying to get a a Pulitzer for sort of social engineering or something, I don't know, but it really, they have written at least three or four 
lead editorials on the topic. I actually did a piece on this at one point because it really just does not seem to me to be the most important thing that we need to think about vis-a-vis -vis our military effort, the Pentagon, et cetera. Um, it's an incredibly small sliver of the population, arguably possibly a slightly larger percentage uh, in the military than of the general population, which really kind of goes to one of the issues uh, that have been problematic here, that transgenders apparently have kinds of conflicted notions about proving their masculinity or whatever, and so they sign up perhaps in higher numbers for the military. This is not me saying this, this is studies that have shown this. And by the way, the costs of treating the medical issues and the psychiatric issues uh, that, are, that arise in the transgender population is very high compared to other people. So the military has actually had a reason for not embracing uh, perhaps open service by transgenders, but I kind of agree with your basic premise. I mean, it just seems to me we have more important things to be worried about. David, is this just odd timing? The day I see Liz strap on some camo and ship out overseas to serve her country, I'll take her comments seriously. These are people who serve their country. They sign up for the Air Force, Army, Navy, Marine Corps to serve their country. And if you think they're less American than you because of their gender identity, maybe you'd like to move to a place like Russia. Well, that's not exactly well, what we're that, saying, though, David. What we're saying that is that this is really a priority Russia. for the Pentagon right now? Move to Russia. You know, they don't like gay people over there. Move to no. Russia. This no. is the United no. States of America. Along with this your sound, United even though it's not States. all what I was saying. And I, and I think I'm with Liz here. We're not saying, we're not trying to make a, a judgment call on, on equality here. What we're saying, though, the Pentagon has a lot more important things they could be dealing with as opposed to this issue. And unfortunately, that's where we're going to have to leave it. Uh, guys, we'll have you back and we can maybe talk about this or something else. We know this issue is not going away. David Goodfriend, Liz Peake, thanks so much.